You are listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. I'm Elena Paventa, Executive Communication Coach and TEDx Organizer. With each episode, I'll share with you communication tips and ideas from top business leaders to help you excel in your career. Hello, hello. Welcome to the next episode of Ideas and Leaders podcast. Today, I'm speaking with Lisa Baker. She's the founder of Ascentim, and she is showing high-performing professionals how to level up, how to get connected, get promoted, and get wealth. And I'm really looking forward to speak uh, to Lisa about those topics. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to Ideas and Leaders. Hello, Elena. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so happy to be with you today. Thank you for being here. Um, it is an honor having you. I know that uh, uh, you had an amazing career and that uh, you decided at a certain point to start your company, Ascentim. So can you share with our listeners what is your story and what is your why behind what you're doing right now? Yes, I'm happy to share that. So often when people ask me about my story, I share with them that I come from very humble beginnings. And I think that's important to share because it's proof that it doesn't matter where you begin, you can build the career and the life of your dreams. And so when I say humble beginnings, I begin with my parents. And if anyone ever read the book, The Help, or they saw the movie, The Help, I, it helps them to understand that my parents were the help. They, my mom and dad worked for a wealthy family where my dad was the chauffeur, the gardener and the handyman. And my mom was the cook, the caretaker for the children um, and the maid. Neither of my parents had a grade school education even. And so it was really important to them that I stay in school get a, what they describe as a good education so that I could get a good job. And I did just that. I stayed in school, graduated from college, and was really fortunate to have a 30-year career in corporate America and went from being mostly in financial services in my career. Then I also worked in technology at Microsoft. And when I decided to retire to start Ascentum, at that time I was working for Synchrony, major financial corporation, Fortune 500 organization, where I was a senior vice president and general manager leading the eBay credit portfolio. That's a two and a half billion dollar book of business that I was responsible for running along with my cross-functional diverse team that managed that business. And so you can go from very humble beginnings with parents who are the help to being a executive in corporate America to running your own business. Wow, wow, that is so inspiring. And um, at a certain point you decided to uh, to stop your corporate career and to start a cent team. So what was the why behind this step? Yeah, you know, what was really um, interesting for me is that when I decided to leave corporate America and retire to, be, to launch a centum, I was at the height of my career and doing very well. But what I started to realize is that the best part of my job was those, those times when I had an opportunity to coach or mentor and sponsor other leaders. And as I started looking over my career and my personal life, what I realized is that there was a common theme. What I am really good at is growing things and people, whether it's growing a portfolio or helping a person to grow and develop, that's what I enjoy doing. And I remember saying to myself during a, a group that I was sponsoring, I was talking to them, they were happened to be a group of African-American um, members of the organization. And I said to them, wow, this meeting has been the best part of my day. If I could find a way to do just this, coach groups and individuals and just have those discussions, that's what I would do. And as I started to listen to my own heart, my own mind, I thought, you know, I can find a way to do just this part of the job. And so while I did my why is I really wanted to make it much easier for other leaders, especially women and people of color 
to ascend to levels that they desire in their career and their life. That's why the name Ascentum, it is all about ascending, that there is no one destination that you arrive to and you say, I've made it. There are always new levels that you can grow to both personally and professionally. And it's my desire to help as many people as I can to achieve what they deem success in their lives. I really, my why, I really want people to live meaningful and abundant lives, to really love the life that they live. Great. It's uh, great to hear that you have this deeper purpose and sense of meaning behind what you do. And I can totally relate to this myself because everything that I do is um, I'm trying, uh, I'm trying to support uh, people, even with my podcast, among others. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I can really relate to what you're saying. So Lisa, I, I know that um, Ascentim is based on uh, three pillars. So you have three main areas in which you support your customers. So can you tell a little bit more about this? Yes, I would be happy to. So the three foundational pillars of Ascentum are connections, careers, and finances. And they are all interrelated to me. So connections is all about people. And that's about developing meaningful connections with the people that you'll need to achieve whatever it is you desire in life. People are absolutely critical. And I wish that I had learned earlier in my career just how important it is to build and maintain those meaningful connections. You need people for every area of growth. So the next pillar, career, whether that is someone who's growing in corporate America like I did, or someone who wants to own and manage their own business or start a podcast, whatever it may be, that the way in which you work and impact the world is the area that I call careers. And you need people to build a career. The other area is finances. Finances, your money, and being able to manage that well is so critical. Oftentimes, financial coaches will omit the area of your career. They do a great job of helping people to create a budget, manage their personal finances or their business finances, but they don't often look at the top line, which is how you bring in more money in the first place. Or career coaches will help you grow your career, get promoted, prepare for interviews, those kinds of things, but they don't, they rarely look at your money, except in terms of helping you to negotiate, for example, a salary. I try to bring it all together with those three pillars. And I think that's what makes Ascentum unique, that we help you to build meaningful relationships with the people that you'll need to give you access, information, um, all that you'll need to grow in your career. We help you to build your career or grow your business. And then we also teach you good money management principles so that as you earn more through your career or business, you know what to do with that money so that then when you're ready to retire like I did, or you want to fund a new endeavor, the money is there to support you doing that so that you have freedom to live and give and do whatever it is you want to. Wow, it sounds really holistic that you have this approach, you, you approach uh, the success from many different sides and that yeah. we don't have to have several different coaches. We can just uh, uh, go to Ascentum and, uh, and uh, get this support. Uh, I'm sure that you have a lot of systems behind this, a lot of methods, um, but if you, we can just shortly discuss each of those areas, just to um, discuss what, what are the most important things that we need to, to make sure that are in place. So we have, we have relationships, we have career and we have finances. So let's mm -hmm. start with, with the relationships. What, uh, what do you think, uh, it, uh, what, what do we need to do to actually build those meaningful relationships that you mentioned, especially that now it is a little bit harder because we work online a lot 
we don't have those one-on-one -on -one, uh, interactions very often as we used to uh, some time ago. So what can we do to actually build those, those relationships? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, building meaningful relationships is, has always been and will always be important. And one of the simple ways that I help people to do that is to think about having their own personal board of advisors. And that is having a team of people, they may or may not even know each other, but they are working together to help you grow in every area of your life. And that is understanding that you need people to play different roles in your life. For example, you, you need a coach. If you want to be better in any area of your life, coaching can help you do that and help you to get faster from where you are to where you really want to be. You also need a sponsor. That's someone who can speak on your behalf, that has the ability to hire you or influence for on your behalf. And so building those meaningful relationships and having a person that fills those critical roles is really key. And you raise a great point in today's environment where most of us are working remote and we are um, doing Zoom and, and meeting in those ways, it's even more important. And the best way to allow people to know you and build those meaning connections is to let your guard down, allow yourself to be vulnerable and willing to share and let people see the full you, not just your work persona, but really integrating and bringing your whole self. It's being intentional about setting meetings. And even if it's five or 10 minutes to just talk with someone on a personal level to get to know them, it goes a long way. Yeah, it, it is really important to build the more personal relationships than it is easier to cooperate on professional level. What I feel is that uh, many uh, business professionals, and um, I don't know, maybe uh, you can uh, also comment on this as you have, you have a, a big experience in corporate America, that uh, people who are um, in uh, those corporate leadership positions, they try to act more professional, they try to hide, uh, they are like, personal life they, they don't use storytelling they don't tell their stories and uh, they so they think that the more professional they will act the more uh, the better they will be perceived but in fact um, it is not necessarily true so what what do you think about this yeah i agree 100 percent. it is not true in fact the opposite is true people connect with people and they connect with our story it's why i start by telling people that my family my parents were the help because it's something that many people can relate to and even if that's not true of their family maybe they've read the book or they've seen the movie and so it gives them a sense of what i mean when i say that um, I share other parts of my, my story. I make it no secret about things that have happened in my life because it often helps people to relate to you. They can see you as a real person and not just this leader that you know sits above them, so to speak, but they can really enter into your experience and understand who you are. It also allows people to get a glimpse into why we value the things that we do, why we say what we say, um, and, it, and it helps them to be able to connect with us more readily. Yes, absolutely. So we need to be more open, more vulnerable, and definitely build our own network of, of uh, mentors, of sponsors, uh, people who can, of our personal coaches, people who can actually support us on our journey, on our career journey. And so this, the, it was the, this connection part and moving to this career career part, uh, what do you think is uh, the most important in, in order to progress in your career? What should we pay attention to? Yeah, in addition to having that team of people that support you, the other thing that is absolutely critical for growing a career, um, whether it's in corporate or growing your business, is to discover what I call your area of greatness. That's what makes each of us very unique. And your area of greatness is that place where 
your strengths, those things that you are naturally good at, aligns with your passion, those things that you enjoy doing, and your purpose, that thing that you're created to do, or your why. When you can align your strengths, your passion, and your purpose, that is your unique area of greatness. And when you operate from there, you're the most powerful, you come across as the most authentic, and you feel better because you're not only doing what you love, but what you're good at, and it aligns with your why. Yeah, so we need to, uh, we can just draw the three circles and make this exercise of figuring out what is, what is in the middle, what Mm -hmm. is our area of greatness. So when we discover this area of greatness and, uh, or several areas that we want to, to move into this direction, what, uh, what can we do to actually more be more purposeful and actually make some steps towards this uh, this goal yeah i think that once you discover what you know where that intersection is one of the first things you can do is to start by just imagining what are what are the possible um, areas of work that align with your area of greatness what industries maybe does that um, lead you to who are the people maybe that you're most equipped to serve based on that area and as you start to kind of list those things out it'll help you to hone in on just some new possibilities for yourself and your career so even within your current organization you may find that there are certain roles or areas within the business that more closely align with your area of greatness so then you can start to connect with people that are working in those areas where you can start to build those relationships and sort of express your interest there. The other thing to do is to almost come up with your, I'll call it just a personal brand statement, or maybe it's an elevator pitch, you can think of it that way, that helps to communicate to people what your area of greatness is or how you operate in that. So it's why I say that I show high performing professionals how to level up and live the life of their dreams. That really aligns with my, what my strengths are, what I'm passionate about, and my why. And that's a simple thing. It's easy for people to kind of generally understand. So if you can do those things, make a list of the areas, the people, and kind of create a statement about who you are and what you do, it will help people to be able to help you navigate your way to opportunities that align with your area of greatness. Yes, absolutely. It is... uh... Uh, it, it sounds so simple to just tell something about you in one sentence, a short elevator pitch or one mission statement, but it is actually not so easy to come up with this because people start saying, oh, I, I do this, I like this, and it is so hard to, to focus on one thing. And I think that only when we become purposeful ourselves and we focus on this one, one area of greatness that we want to, to move towards, then uh, new opportunities come up. Yeah. And yeah, we start yeah. communicating it to others. Yeah. It's, it's like the energy that you put out, it sort of flows back to you. And so when you're able to articulate what that is, even if it's not perfect to begin with, that's okay. You can continue to refine it over time. And the more you operate in an area that's even close to your area of greatness, the more clear you become about who you are and what you value, the easier it will be for you to communicate that. And the more you'll draw people to you who align with that, that can kind of help you along your journey. Yes, yes, definitely. And uh, so we, we discussed the, the relationship part, we discussed the, the career part and finances. With the, you know, it is always the most exciting, exciting thing to think about. And uh, many of us uh, actually think about uh, careers in terms of, uh, you know, improving financial situation and or about building a business. So uh, what do you teach your clients? What is the most important thing to do in order to uh, have your 
finances in order? <laughs> yeah, one of the, you know, there are a few things, but the first is I tell people this, that if you tell your money where to go, you won't have to wonder where it went. And that is my way of simply saying you must have a plan, a plan for every dollar that comes into your hands and give that dollar an assignment, tell it where to go. Because all too often what happens is people don't have a budget or they don't have a plan for their money. And so they're spending sort of freely without any clear direction, but you can't reach a destination even a financial one, if you don't know where you're trying to go and have a plan to get there. And so that is absolutely critical. It's having a plan for your money. The other thing, and it's related to your career or your business, it is negotiating to get paid what you are worth. And that's why operating in your area of greatness is also important because when you're operating there, that's when you are the most valuable. The bigger problem you solve, the more valuable you are, then the more you can earn. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that this issue is especially important for the women who are listening yes. to us. Uh, we are very often afraid of actually being strong about our, uh, our, our area of greatness and with negotiating uh, uh, or maybe if we if we want to have a new position or we want to earn more money, it is somehow harder for women to to negotiate. And uh, it is uh, uh, I think that that uh, it is so important to uh, to do this. Yeah, it's very important. I think women all too often we we are um, almost sort of told that we have to be air quote, nice. And we think it's not nice to ask for what we want, or maybe we're being too forward. But that is um, kind of an old and maybe outdated way of thinking. And that mindset is part of what keeps us um, bound and not earning what we're really worth. You absolutely should feel confident and comfortable in asking for what you want. And it's not just asking without purpose or without um, research, it's knowing the value of what you bring to the table. It's knowing what the market is willing to pay for what you do and what you bring, and then negotiating for what you want. It may also mean carving out your own niche and finding a new place to operate in if you're not able to get what you want where you are. All of that is perfectly okay. Um, nice is not synonymous with being quiet or not asking for what you want. You can be nice and ask for what you want. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree with you 100%. So um, this finance part is very important. It's important to negotiate. It is important to know your worth and uh, to, to have a plan. So what what do you recommend as for um, uh, fi financial planning? So what mm -hmm. are the most important areas that we need to, to have in our financial plan? Yeah, you know, one of the first things that um, I find that hinders many people from reaching their financial goals is that they are overburdened with debt. Um, in the United States, for example, about 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And that's across all income brackets. And so what that means is we're living above our means. We often have too much debt. And so um, one of the first things that you can do to boost your financial plan in your future is to reduce and eliminate debt where possible. The second thing that you can do, and this aligns to the, the process, the grow finances process that I teach my clients. So the G and grow as it relates to finances is get out of debt. The R is to retain more income because it doesn't matter how much you make. It matters more how much you're able to keep of what you make. We all have heard of people who won the lottery or maybe they make millions of dollars in their career, but then they subsequently have to file bankruptcy. It's not because they didn't make enough, it's because they didn't keep enough of what they made. And so I think it's very important to look for ways to save so that you can retain more of the money that you are earning. And then you can use those that money that you're retaining to invest for growth. 
Um, the other thing is the O is about organizing your assets and protecting your assets. So as you start to earn more, as you're investing and you're watching your assets grow, you want to have a plan to protect them. So it's having the proper insurances. It is having a will and all of those um, safeguards that will allow you to keep what you've built and leave a legacy for the future. And that brings us to the W, which is to walk in wealth. Walking in wealth is much more than just amassing more assets or more money, but it is also having a plan and leaving a legacy for the future. Um, and you start building that legacy now while you're here um, so that you can give and live the way you want to and um, leave something for future generations. Wow, I really like this uh, grow process. It is uh, very easy, and uh, yeah, if we if we just follow those steps, then it sounds like uh, we can we uh, we can actually do much better. So yeah. uh, can you, let's repeat those. Uh, G yeah. is. G is for get out of debt. Get out of debt. R is retain more of your income. Mm -hmm. O is to organize and protect your assets. W is walk in wealth. And that is the grow finances process. Great. I, I think that it is so important. And I really like that in, all, in everything that, uh, that you teach, you just say that we need to be more purposeful and more focused on what, what do we actually want to achieve. So we discussed those three main areas, relationships and connections. Uh, then we had the career and then we had finances. And if we just get a little bit more purposeful in those areas and uh, use your tips, of course, then we can, we, we can achieve so much more. So uh, Lisa, thank you so much for sharing with us. Uh, if you can sum up and uh, leave our listeners with uh, a message based on what we discussed, what would it be? Yes, I would, I would tell them to discover your area of greatness, have a plan and execute on that plan step by step to be really intentional. And to remember that progress is the goal, not perfection, but progress. And even taking small incremental steps is progress. And if you put those small incremental steps together, you will grow, you will achieve the life of your dreams. So that's what I would leave you with. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much for such an inspiration, Lisa. I think that uh, it was really great discussion and great episode. So if our listeners want to reach out, want to contact you, where can they find you? Thank you so much. So your listeners can connect with me on LinkedIn. I would love to connect on LinkedIn. I am Lisa L. Baker. They can also follow Ascentum on Facebook and Instagram at Ascentum, and I would love to hear from them. Perfect. We will definitely post all of your links under our episode so that our listeners can immediately jump there and connect with you. Thank you so much, Lisa, for the discussion. Thank you for sharing so much value on Ideas and Leaders podcast. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Ideas and Leaders podcast. Did you enjoy this episode? Let me know that you listened by tagging me in your LinkedIn profile and using a hashtag Ideas and Leaders. See you in the next episode.